Hello guys, today I want to talk about peer rate duration. Peer rate duration is a concept which I personally think is often very poorly explained. And in this video I want to help you to understand it and I'm going to support it with some intuitive examples. When you tune into this video you probably already know about effective and modified duration. And you know that their main drawback is that they assume a parallel shift in the yield curve. What do I mean with parallel shift? Well, let's have a look here. I've plotted the yield curve over here, and these are the respective spot rates for every single maturity. Now, modified and effective duration assume that if we speak about an increase in the yield, we speak about an increase on the whole curve. So let's say interest rates increase by 50 basis points, then we assume that it's a parallel shift in theory. However, in practice, this is often highly unrealistic. For example, if a central bank increases short-term interest rates by, let's say, 50 basis points, then a much more likely pattern which will occur is this one. So we, the market responded accordingly to the increase of the central bank on the short end. However, this increase is not reflected on the long end of the curve. And let's say we have a 10-year bond then obviously there's this impact on the yield curve will be less severe than a parallel one. And to assess the impact of these kind of changes on the yield curve, we need key rate duration. Key rate duration is calculated for every single year. So we have 10 different key rate durations for one particular bond. Whereas if for modified or effective duration, we only have one duration for the whole bond. And these key rate durations allow us to assess the impact on the bond's price for every single cash flow which occurs on this yield curve. So it's going to be way more accurate. I'm going to explain this now with an example to make it more uh, clear. Let's think about a 6% annual coupon bond with a maturity of 4 years and a face value of 1000. I plotted the cash flows over here and I discounted them back at their respective spot rates. Here are the present values of these cash flows and if you add them together, you get the present value of the bond. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the key rate duration for one of these maturities. When you calculate key rate duration, you will often come across these two different formulas here. They look very similar and actually yield basically the same result. And I'm just going to break them down now. So the key rate duration for one of these years is the present value of the bond, this one here, minus the present value of the bond. If you increase the rate on one of these maturities divided by the change in this particular rate you just changed here times the present value of the bond again. This formula is basically the same, it's, it just takes an average because you have the value of the bond for a decrease and the value of the bond for an increase, so you have to divide it by two, but they pretty much yield the same result. Some people might look at this and say, well, this is not intuitive, I don't get it, but it actually is because this part here, this PV0 minus PV plus divided by P0, this is the change in the bond's price. And we divide this by the change in the rate. So this is rise over run. This is the main concept of duration. How does a bond price change responds to changes in the rate? So this is basically what it means. It gets more clear when we run through this example here quickly. So let's say we want to calculate the key rate duration for year one. Key rate duration, year one. Well, we use this formula. We have our present value of the bond. And now what we're going to do is we're going to increase one of these rates by, let's say, 50 basis points. Let's increase the first one by 50 basis points. So instead of 1%, we have 1.5%. And the price of our bond is going to be 1165.76 now. 
So what we do, we plug in the values here and we're going to calculate it according to this formula here. Write this change in rate is 50 basis points and we multiply this by our present value again. So we get 0 0.05. This is the key rate duration for year one of this bond. So how are we going to interpret this one? Well, we can interpret this one just as we interpret normal duration. Let's say that we expect that interest rates are going to change by exactly these zero point by these 50 basis points. Okay, so we take minus the key rate duration times 50 basis points. What we get is a percentage value of minus 0 0.03. So this means that if interest rates for one year increase by 50 basis points, we expect that the price of our bond is going to decrease by minus 0.03%. Now, obviously, you don't really often get just simple changes in one rate. You, what's, what's way more likely is that you get a change along the curve like this one. So you have a change in the yield for year one, year two, and it's, it's, it's diminishing over time. So what you would have to do is you would have to calculate this key rate duration for every single year. Uh, this is quite tedious and there's actually an easier way to come up with these key rate durations. For that, first of all, we have to calculate the weights of these present values according to the value of the bond. We can calculate this quite simply just by calculating the weight here. We break that down. We sum here and now what we do is we multiply our weights times the year we do this for every single one we sum them up again and we can call this already key rate duration and as you can see here the key rate duration for year one is 0 0.5 again just as we've calculated it before and down here, where you can see, this is the modified duration of our bond. We get this by just summing up all of these key rate durations. Now that we have all these key rate durations, we can assess an interest rate change along the curve. So let's calculate this. Minus our first key rate duration here, times the change in the yield plus our second key rate duration times the change in the yield plus the third one and so on. So let's take the percent again and we get a decrease of 0.79%. So if this change in the yield curve, which we see over here, actually occurs like this, we expect the price of our bond fall by minus 0.79 percent and we can actually check whether that's correct let's take the price of our bond again and calculate it when this change occurs here so now what we do we change our discount weights to the ones down here to the new yield So our new price is 1157.04, 1157.04. Now we can calculate the ratio between those two and as we can see here, let's make it percent again, the price fell by 0.77%, which is similar to the one we've anticipated. but. This one is only duration, so it's just an uh, it's just an estimate. If we want a more precise results, we have to use convexity as well, which I'm not going to talk about in this video. But as you can see, it's already a very good approximation. So this is how you can assess a non-parallel shift with the help of key rates for a single bond. Now I'm going to move on to a bond portfolio, which will hopefully give you more insight on how these things work.
What we see here is a portfolio of three bonds. Each one has a face value of 1000 and their respective maturities are one year, three years and five years. Our coupon is 5% for every single bond and our portfolio value is 30,000. We assume that these bonds are equally distributed, so the value of every single bond in our portfolio is 10,000 euro. Now we basically do the same thing we did over here. We calculate these key rate durations for every single bond. Well, the first bond is pretty, uh, pretty easy because the, we only have one balloon payment at the end of the period. So our key rate duration is the same as our modified duration of one, because they all, all payments occur after one year. For the second bond, it's similar to the one we've calculated before, and I've done this over here. So our second bond has a maturity of three years. These are our cash flows. We discount them back again at our spot rates over here. These are the same ones. We get a present value of these cash flows. We weight them according to the present value of the bond, and we get our key rate durations. We plug them in here. If we add them together, we get our modified duration again, and we do the same thing for our maturity five, our bond with the maturity of five years. And this is the respective modified duration for this bond. Now, these ones here are the key rate durations for our portfolio. How do we get them? We take the mean of these key rate durations for the single bond. So I can actually type in mean over here. So since it's equally distributed, we can just add them together and then divide it by three. We do the same thing for the other ones. So we get the key rate durations for our portfolio. And now we can assess how the value of our portfolio is going to change when interest rate changes. So let's do this right over here. Let's assume that the one year rate is going to increase by 100 basis points. So what we do is, since it's duration again, we take minus 100 basis points times our key rate duration plus our second key rate duration times, let's say interest rates here increase by 50 basis points, plus our third key rate duration times, let's say that interest rates here increase only by 10 basis points, okay? Now we can see that our bond portfolio decreases by approximately minus 0.49%. This is approximately this is not percent this is a num this is a currency so i don't know why it's pound right now but this change this change in the yield curve would approximately reduce our portfolio value by 30 by 146 000, by 146 pounds i hope that this video was helpful to you and I could explain the concept of curate duration a little bit more accurate. Thank you very much for listening. Bye.